So moving forward to accounting preferences. Now, once you have set all your enable features, uh, feature is something that you would uh, that would allow you to enable a certain uh, functionality in NetSuite or disable a certain functionality in NetSuite. However, once you are done with that, uh, the next thing that you can do is set your accounting preferences. So preferences, as the name says, are, are some defaults that you can set in your uh, NetSuite account. So whenever you run a report, automatically the preferred uh, settings would show up. So these are certain preferences that you will set in your accounting preferences. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll just try to relate it as much as I can with your AR process that you're doing right now. So that would give you, you know, a more better understanding of the features. So yeah, the navigation is set up. Accounting, now you have to go in accounting, okay? You go in accounting yeah. because it's related to accounting preferences. You go in accounting yes. and you scroll down over here and you have your accounting preferences. So oh. Click on that. And here you will see certain preferences. Like in the journal tab, you can see use account numbers. So have you see have you created chart of account or GL code in NetSuite before? Uh, no. All right. Do you see an account number before the description of that chart of account? Yeah. So I can see use account numbers and uh, uh, legal name also. I could able to see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. All yeah, so transactions when, when you, in consultation. Yeah. So. Yeah, so whenever you are working with chart of accounts, let me just open a chart of account. You see this account number. So yeah. account account number and account description is something that is shown whenever you are entering a transaction in NetSuite. So this account number is enabled because in my accounting preferences, I have selected use account numbers. Yes. So if your client if your client does not want account number, you just simply disable this. But again, it's a it's a mm. recommended uh, practice or recommended approach from accounting perspective to always use account numbers. So let's say you know if your client mm. says I don't want to use account numbers, so you can educate them that this is this is basically a, a best practice to have your account number in your chart of accounts, and maybe you know convince them to use it. So as a as a functional consultant, you are not just implementing NetSuite, but you are also suggesting them some best practices as well. So this is one of the yes. best practice to use account numbers with your chart of account. And this is where you can enable or disable it. If you want to use your cash basis reporting, so you know NetSuite has uh, this option where you could run your report by default on cash basis. So you can just enable the cash basis reporting here. And whenever you run any report in NetSuite, any financial report, uh, it would be on cash basis. So you can do that as well. Aging reports. Okay. This is this is very good one. Like you know, if you are doing your AR aging report, how do you want to calculate the brackets or the aging? Is it based on the due date of the transaction, or is it based on the transaction date? So these are certain preferences that you are setting up over here. Again, preference is something that is going to show up by default. You can always change it as well. And uh, the best part about it is that there is no gray out situation over here. So you can always come up here and enable or disable it without without the fear of you know uh, enabling it and uh, later unable to change it. So this is just a preference. You can always change it later as well. Here are certain accounts receivable preferences. So if you have if you uh, allow the parent customers to to pay for their child customers, you can uh, you know check this box. Do you want yes. to see only open transactions on your customer statements? Uh, have you have you seen customer statements in NetSuite? Uh, so customer statements like uh, applying the payment to, uh, to the particular customer. Uh, no, just a statement that you send to your customer on monthly basis that these are your open transactions. Yeah, that I could able to see. Correct. Yeah. So here is the. So this, so and, this yeah this, this is comes under agent report. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. But yeah, when you when you're uh, you know sending out the customer statements, if you by default want to show all the open transactions, you just mark it over here, and uh, it will Correct. automatically show up on that uh, statement. So yes, just wanted to make you sure you, that you are aware of the preferences. And similarly, we mm -hmm. also have certain preferences for your accounts payable. So if you need to have any vendor credit limit warnings enabled in your NetSuite account, you enable this from here. 
Uh, if you want to auto apply your vendor prepayments on the vendor bills, you simply enable this and stuff like that. Again, anything can be changed here later. So if you realize that you made a mistake by enabling a particular feature, uh, you can just simply uh, you know, uncheck this from your preferences. So as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Again, help is always available in the help center. So I would highly recommend you to go here and read each and everything. Click on the, the field uh, headings and read it. So let's say, you know, what is uh, the difference between voiding transactions using journal entries? So click on this. And it's going to say, check this box to create a reversing journal entry that voids the checks and transactions. So sometimes, you know, certain organizations prefer deleting a transaction when there is a mistake. So you can again, you know, tell them that this is not a recommended approach. You should always void a transaction to create a reversing journal. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, part of the best practices and also let you know, you know, where to enable or disable this preference. So any, any questions on this? Okay. Uh, here, like, uh, as per due date, the system will lessen the automatic uh, reminder email to customer. So, like, where is you able to find the, uh, this option uh, here? Uh, which option? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? No. Uh, as per due date, uh, system will. Yeah, yeah. I can able to hear. Uh, what I'm asking that as per due date, uh, system will send uh, automatic reminder emails to customers. Mm hmm. Uh, so we're good able to see this option uh, under uh, accounting preferences. So automatically you cannot, uh, you know, there is there's no feature in NetSuite that would automatically send out uh, emails to the customers. Uh, that's a separate uh, discussion that we would be doing in our order to cash process where we will be looking into different scenarios oh. and, you know, so different automations. But on the on the on the preferences and setup side, there is there is no such feature that would allow you to you know directly send out emails to the to the customers based on due date. This is mainly just for your aging report. So let me run an aging report really quick here. So if I go in reports, uh, okay. Uh, and again, you know, I'll be covering this in more detail in our AR side. But if I open this AR aging report really quick. And if I go in my aging options, you see by default mm -hmm. it's on due date. My aging is based on due date here. Now this is because my yes. accounting preference says that my aging should always be on due date whenever I run a report by default. Okay. So this is what happens over here. Now so I, can uh, I understand that the due date uh, yeah. mm -hmm. transaction yeah, rate. So uh, no, I understand uh, the due date. So like, what is the transaction date? Uh, transaction date is the date on which you created this transaction. So let's say you created an invoice oh. on uh, 1st November and the terms that you mm -hmm. give on that uh, invoice is 30 days. So the due date is mm -hmm. going to be 30th November, but your transaction date is 1st of November. So that's the then both are, is, is both are similar uh, due date and transaction date. No, it cannot be. It cannot be same. Like, you know, let's, let's, yeah, let, let me give you an example. Like this is a business process scenario. So when you sell on okay. credit, you always, you know, give uh, some margin period to your customers that, okay, if you buy this thing from me, you can pay this uh, in 15 days. So 15 credit. day is basically your due date. So you mm. created the transaction on 1st of November, but you are asking mm. the customer to pay me on after 15 days. So the due yes. date is going to be after 15 days. So let's say 15th of November. Now, do you want to see your a AR aging based on the transaction date or when the transaction is due to be paid? Usually it's you yes. know based on due date because you know that's where actual uh, receivables uh, is, is due, right? It's not due Correct. on 1st of November, it's due on 15th of November. So you select Correct. due date to see your AR aging. Yes, understood, yeah, got it. Okay, so yeah, that, that's the basic difference between transaction date and due date. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, any any questions on the accounting preferences side? Uh, no. Could you please click on time on expenses? Uh, so, these time on expenses approval routing. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so let me just give you a time and expenses is like, you know, whenever you are recording times in your uh, NetSuite account. So as an employee, if you want to track your time uh, against any projects or against any invoices, bills, if you're in a in a software or service verticals, you might be entering uh, time entries. So who is going to approve your time entry? Uh, would the supervisor be emailed for any time entry, you know, uh, creation and all that stuff is part of this. So <clears> this <throat> is this is where you yes. would be dealing with all that. And approval routing. Got it. So, yeah, and in the approval routing, what you essentially do is enable the transactions on which you need any approvals. So consider, let's say, you know, uh, purchase orders. So if you want someone to enter purchase order and it should be approved by someone else, like the supervisor or somebody else, you would just come up mm -hmm. in the approval routing and enable purchase orders. So now purchase orders would have the ability to use that approval workflow. So on okay. any transaction, if you need any approvals from the supervisor, you come up here and you enable uh, and check that. Like say for journal entries, so if you want uh, journal entries to be approved by someone before they are posted, you check this box here. If you uncheck this, it means that there will be no journal entry approvals. Anyone who enters a journal so, is directly going to be posted. Correct, yes. Correct, yeah. And okay. like, how about these projects? Uh... Projects is, project is again, you know, very uh, small term here. Uh, but again, if your organization is, is doing project management within NetSuite, it's a separate module that has to be purchased. So I don't think if we have this over here on our training account, but if the client has this project module, you will see some some preferences and some defaults for your projects. So it's it's related to the project management side of NetSuite. Like while creating the project, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything related to the projects is going to be part of the project module. Order management yes. is all related to your sales order fulfillment, picking, packing, fulfillment related stuff, invoicing related stuff. So here you will see your typical AR or order management process. Items mm -hmm. and transactions is all related to the items. So here you can set your default accounts. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go into this more detail when we go in our items and inventory side, but this is yes. where you set your default accounts. And when you create a new item in NetSuite, automatically the GL accounts are defaulted from this page. So okay. as, I, as I said, that preferences is all about default settings. So here you set your default asset account, default cost of goods sold account, default receivables account, and all the defaults. Again, you can always change that on the transaction level, but this is where you set your defaults. So that's the whole okay. idea behind setting up the preferences. Yes. Yeah, yeah, got it.